This is the game that's being played on you. There's a handful of billionaires that run the entire globe and they want endless war. Why? Because they it's it's good money for their fossil fuels. It's good money for their military industrial complex. And it's good in every other economic way for them. And at the same time, the government, indeed, all the governments of the West, those governments have successfully gained more and more power. This is who's running our country. A handful of billionaires. Uh, let's put it this way. Money trumps... Um, Peace sometimes. Ha, <laughs> ah, that is funny. Just as we the people have seen our freedoms, our rights, standards of living, our, our, our mental and physical well being even compromised and reduced. They all work for the same people. And none of them care about you, and none of them care about your country. All they care about is profit and the international flow of dollars. What it's always about is frightened, greedy, power-crazed bullies abusing the law of the land to make themselves safe from challenge. And it's happening right in your fucking face. And now look at where we are. Somehow they got, they got their war that divided us. Uh, talk about a vicious circle. You know, a anyone in any doubt about the viciousness of the circle need only look to the east and to what's happening now in the benighted holy land and they're like hey i know what we'll do we'll let israel have their 9-11 and then we can have people hating each other again inside the united states and we can have division and civil war war in ukraine has been replaced by war in the middle east and anyone my age uh, knows that that's a species of war that we in the west have been bred to dread like no other israel's function and purpose is to serve the interests of the empire that existed everywhere. We see attempts by some forces to provoke further escalation, to drag as many other countries and peoples into the conflict as possible, using them for their own selfish interests. Now, what does it come down to? It comes down to a lily white West personified by NATO. Look at NATO. The Turks are sort of a blend, but they're as close as you get to people of color. So it's the lily white quest, the collective quest against the rest of the world, for God's sake. Okay. We must make in Israel, said the British government at the time of the Balfour Declaration, a loyal British Ulster in the Middle East, one that would do our bidding, control the area for us, that will turn everyone against each other. They set Muslims against Jews. They call for war with the infidels. They pit Shiites against Sunnis, Orthodox against Catholics. We are increasingly fragmented as people, atomized driven into smaller and smaller mutually suspicious groups and enclaves divided into this opposing group or that always always and for one reason or another set at one another's throats in europe they turn a blind eye to blasphemy and vandalism against muslim holy sites in a number of countries they are already openly at the official level glorifying Nazi criminals and anti-Semites who have the blood of Holocaust victims on their hands. Now we look back over the history within living memory and we see nothing but war. Nothing but opportunities for arms companies to make money, obscene amounts of money, and for governments to take and hold ever-increasing power. Nothing but the steady growth of authoritarianism, totalitarianism. And at the same time, there is talk about some kind of new world order, the essence of which is actually the same, hypocrisy, double standards, claims to exclusivity, to global dominance. Does the Israeli leadership believe that all men are created equal? If you're a political Zionist, you don't. If you're a political Zionist, you believe in a greater Israel and you believe in the covenant between God and the Israeli people uh, that guarantees them a homeland. Uh, you are the chosen people. 
Israel may have a big, big patron in Washington, but it's got nothing else. If you are a religious political Zionist, um, you believe you are the superior race and you believe that the Palestinians are subhumans. And all around us, it's fear and anxiety about disease, about the climate, about money, about war after war after war. The purpose of all these actions is obvious. To increase instability in the world, to divide cultures, peoples, world religions, to provoke a conflict of civilizations. What, two decades into the 21st century, we're being invited to contemplate and to fear the mother of all wars, perhaps global nuclear war, sparked by horror and growing more horrible by the day. All this according to the well-known principle of divide and conquer. Divide et impera, divide and conquer. Uh, this has uh, been strategies of empires uh, throughout the ages uh, that you divide the other side. Uh, you create those divisions. The reason that Netanyahu, you know, was in 2019 talking about we got to get money to them is one, divide and conquer. You divide and you conquer. And this has been a U.S. foreign policy approach. Israel, like any colonial power, they have to make sure that the parties are divided. Divide so we can rule. That's what this is. That's what's happening. And there it is. And that doesn't piss you off. You still don't understand the game that's playing, being played on you? As always, first and foremost, before anything else, we must ask ourselves the same question. The question is, who benefits? Yeah, they are a superior race. They view everybody, the Palestinians, Americans, Russians, everybody as subhuman. Who gains, who has gained from all of this and always gains, regardless of the emergency, regardless of the increasing hardship of the many. We could have a world that is peaceful, united, and pursuing sustainable development if we choose to do so. And the real enemy is are our governments. It's not about left and right. It's not about religion. It's not about gay or straight or trans. It's not about race. It's about wrong and right. And we need to put aside the hegemonic divide et impera strategy uh, of uh, U.S. foreign policy, and then we can make some progress. Who benefits? And in answer to that question, all I can really say is not me and not mine. We're not doing better. And I suspect that that's true for almost all of you too.